You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Welcome our dear listeners to another episode on the Dean Team with you today, your brother in Islam Malaz, and I've got with me uh, the uh, very important and uh, prominent Hablos. Do we have to show. do this every time? Are I we going to do this every single episode? I think we have to do this, Muhammad. It's Hablos, man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in. Abu Ahmed, it's always a pleasure to be with you. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful topic we have today. Of course. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a lot of compulsory actions. And a lot of pillars in our deen. No. And today, today we want to speak about one of the most important pillars in our deen. And this pillar is the salah, the prayer. Allahu Akbar. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, uh, he describes in Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, Alif la meem, thalika al-kitabu la rayba fi hudan lil-muttaqeen. He describes the muttaqeen. Al-ladhina yu'minuna bil-ghaybi wa yuqimuna salah The people that establish the prayer. So one of the things that makes you from the muttaqeen is when you establish your prayer. You know, the prayer is the, in the beautiful hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he says about the prayer. Why is the prayer so important to, to us? Because the prayer in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it's amud din It's the main pillar. It's the main, يعني, it's the main foundation that holds up the religion. Allahu Akbar. يعني, no other ibadah was given such a status. He says that the prayer is the amud that if the prayer is established, then religion has good grounds to stand on. He says, but if the prayer is not established, then you have destroyed your religion. Subhanallah. I mean, if you just look at a building or any, any big hall where there's pillars holding up the roof, structural pillars, and somebody comes in and says, you know what? I don't like the shape of this pillar. I want to take it off. What would the engineer say? So you're crazy. The whole roof is going to collapse. The ceiling is going to collapse. The building is going to collapse. Similarly, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the person that decides that this pillar of Islam is not important is just allowing the roof or Islam, his Islam to collapse. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. It's, it's, subhanallah. And it's so important that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, this is what separates us, meaning the believers, from the? Non-believers. From the non-believers. He didn't mention which group, he didn't mention which religion. No, no, no. He said the difference between belief and non belief is this beautiful, beautiful pillar called as salah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, in fact, you find in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it wasn't only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that taught us about salah. It was Luqman. You know, Luqman. He says, Ya Bunayya aqim salah. Oh, my son, establish prayer. One of his first advisors to his son. And we know that Luqman, the wise man in the Qur'an, his story is mentioned in the Qur'an. He tells his son, advises his son, Oh my son, establish prayer. Musa alayhi salam, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa, illa ana fa'budni wa aqim salata li dhikri. Establish prayer for my remembrance. So the salah and this, this rukun, this pillar of our deen, hasn't started recently. It's been there for a very long time. No one knows which form it was in, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us the example and the form that we must perform this pillar in until the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar, this is, you know, subhanallah, Abu Ahmad, if you don't mind me asking, that sometimes when we think of salah, we think of a burden, right? We think of this, you know, look, I'm forced, it's an obligation. But wallahi, my brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is not how he looked at the salah. He said something else. Allahu Akbar. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَةِ That the coolness of my eye was made in the prayer. And the coolness of the eye, I mean, this is an expression that you need to be a desert Arab to understand this. I mean, the desert is so hot, that the temperature is so hot. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying, I find the coolness, I find the relaxation, I find the comfort in the salah. And for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's not like us. I mean, we see it as a burden after praying Isha before I go to sleep. And you say, oh, let's try and rush it. But for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when, when there was a matter that worried him or stressed him out, 
qama ila salah he used to get up to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu akbar salah for them wasn't a burden and it shouldn't be for us either no of course not because for us salah it's you know look it's an obligation let me get it out of the way wallahi my brothers and sisters salah for rasulullah and the sahaba and for and for all the greats that came after them salah was their time away it was their time to connect to their allah it was a time to relieve themselves from the worries and the stresses of this world. It was the time for them. You know what's funny? We all work so hard. Every one of us works so hard one way or another in the way that he feels or he knows best to find peace with himself, right? Or to find comfort in life or to find a better life. They found it in their salah. And it's actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a command. He says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Seek help through patience and through prayer. And indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's one of these qualities that, you know, when something worries me, when something I'm stressed about, something is a burden in my life, I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for answers. I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help through my prayer. When you pray, you are communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's as if you're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. And this is, subhanAllah, you find that this is true when, you know, when you look at the hadith so many times, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the salah would be approaching, he would call out to Bilal, Ya Bilal, quickly, quickly, Ya Bilal, get up, get up, and make the call, make the adhan. Rihna biha, Ya Bilal. SubhanAllah. That you make that, you know, make the call. Why? So that we can relax. Make the call. رحنا ب... يعني give us relief, Ya Bilal, in calling the Adan. Right? Why? Because now for them it was a time of zoning out. Now it was a time for them preparing themselves mentally. You know, this time between the Adan and the Iqama, this is a very, very, very spiritual time. This is a time where we know that, we know that in this time that the dua is accepted. Why? It, when you sit and you make your dua, you're mentally preparing for the salah. You're mentally preparing for the connection, not with your friend, not with your, you know, not with the person that, that you love, not with your family member, but with Allah, with your creator, with the one who knows you better than you know yourself, with the one who knows your problems, with the one who has the solution to your problems, with the one that has the cure to your sicknesses. With the one that has the finances to your debts, I'm about to connect to him. So what an honor this was for them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And can be for us. Subhanallah. You know, you know Muhammad, subhanallah, there's something very prominent about it and it's very significant about this, this pillar of Islam. I mean, it stands out amongst the rest. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fasting compulsory, he sent down an ayah. Through Jibreel alayhi salam. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina maqablikum. Same with zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down an ayah. For hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down an ayah. Wa atimu al-hajja wa al-umratu lillah. But when it came to the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the heavens on the night of Isra' and Mi'raj for him to receive the order for this pillar. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this pillar in Islam has a special rank. It's not like the others. Subhanallah, it's got a special rank. And you know, I mean, all the ulama and the, I mean, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, in the rajuli wa bayna shurki wal kufri tarku salah, that between a person and disbelief is abandoning, abandoning salah. Subhanallah, it's, it's a very, very serious matter. But yet you find today, unfortunately, so many people take this salah for granted. They miss out on the opportunity. And subhanallah, there's no excuse, Muhammad. I mean, if, if you are sick, then you're not, you're not required to fast in the month of Ramadan. If you don't meet the nisab, the certain amount that's required to pay zakat, you're not required to pay the zakat. If you don't have the physical ability and the financial capability to perform hajj, you are not required to perform hajj. But when it comes to salah, if you are unable to perform the salah standing, you must perform it sitting down. And if you are unable to, stand, to perform it sitting down, you must perform it lying down. And if you're unable to perform it lying down, you must do it with your head. And if you are unable to do it with your head, you must do it with your eyes. And if you're unable to do it with your eyes, you must do it with your heart. No excuse. No excuse whatsoever. Allahu Akbar. You know, this again, going back to, you know, you were just saying, Abu Ahmed, you were saying how that, that all of the other all of the other ibadat, all of the other acts of worship came down through Jibril. It came down through revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
But you know, let's go back and try to live this moment, this this great time in history when a man on earth was risen to the heavens. To be given. Again, you know, it wasn't it wasn't an order. It was an it was an honor. Subhanallah. That now, Ya Muhammad, you and your nation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you and your nation have been given the honor of praying to me and connecting to me 50 times a day. Allahu Akbar. I mean, we struggle with five today. <laughs> 50 times a day. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had so much joy. You know, let's, Allahu Akbar, sometimes we get so happy when someone who's who's well known in the community, remembers my name, right? Or just imagine you had access to a really good lawyer or you had access to a really good judge or you had access to a politician. You walk around and you're so proud of yourself. Why? Because you know one way or another connected. that, hey, I've got connections, right? This is how we should feel when it comes to prayer. That, hey, I, that, you know what? I also have connections. But not to the makhluq, not to the creation. I have connections to the creator. With no middleman. <laughs> with no, with no, Intermediary. Uh, nothing. Direct, direct, you know now, to speak to a politician, right? Or to speak to even the, the CEO of a business. Can you go directly to him? Of course not. You have to send an email, you got to go in, you got to speak to the secretary, and then she'll put you on to management, and then management will put you on until the, and, 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 and this isn't a guarantee that you will meet. But with Allah, wherever you are, and another honor that was given to this nation that wasn't given to any, that the whole earth, you can pray wherever you are. Subhanallah. The whole earth has been made a masjid. Wherever we are, we can connect. And speak to our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. SubhanAllah. It's from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know the story. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came down and he met with Musa alayhi salam. And he told him, Musa told him, Ya Muhammad, go back and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reduce this number for you. 50 is too much. Go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell him to reduce it. I tried it with my people and they failed. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes back up. Thank God for Musa. Abu so, alayhi salam. Alayhi <laughs> salam. <laughs> alayhi salam. <laughs> And, and this kept happening up and back, up, up, up and up and down, up and down, up and down, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there are five prayers prescribed on the Muslims. When he came down to Musa, Musa told him, go back and tell him it's too much. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in yastahi, I am shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've asked him too much. Subhanallah. But not only did the number of prayers reduce, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the reward of 50 prayers when we perform the five prayers. That's so, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now every prayer is worth 10. ten. Subhanallah. 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 Wallahi, I mean, this, this pillar of Islam is something of, of great importance in our life. And my life should be, I mean, I, I should plan my, my whole day around my prayers. I must make sure that I don't miss any of my prayers. And the other thing is, you find, Muhammad, today that, I mean, when we miss a prayer, there's, there's no feeling of guilt the conscience, you know, that doesn't feel any any sorrow or sadness or, or a, there's no sense of loss. But subhanAllah, if, if something materialistic, you lose a bit of money or, or you know, um, you, you drop your phone, you, you feel the sadness then. But when you miss your prayer, I mean, it's, it's got, gotten to a stage where people, I mean, don't even feel that guilty. SubhanAllah. It's because I think it goes back to, I think it goes back to the fact that we don't know the value of it. Allah, it's you know, so important. Why do we get upset when you drop your smartphone and you crack the screen? Especially if it's the Samsung now, why? Because you know, you know that this is an automatic couple of hundred dollars. Subhanallah. Right? Why do you get upset where, you know, you know, if your car is stolen or something wants to happen to you? Why? Because you know the value of these worldly things. You know the value of things that I can touch. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he says in the hadith that it is easier for a person it is easier, my brothers and sisters, for a person to lose, not his phone, not his car, not his car, to lose all his wealth. Not only that, he says to lose all his wealth and to lose all of his family. It is easier for this person to lose all his wealth and family and not to miss one Asr Salah. Allahu Akbar. 
Why? Because Rasulullah, he knew the value. They knew the value, this connection. Why? Because this salah, if I miss, I can never in my life bring it back. You can make it up, but you cannot make up that asr prayer that was of that date. That's gone. That's long gone. You know? Allahu Akbar. So, so yani, it really comes to knowing value. You know, the value of salah. You know, one of the important ways, I mean, to really understand the importance of this pillar in Islam is, is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, إِنَّ أَوَّلُ مَا, يح- أول ما يُحَاسَبُ بِهِ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ صَلَاتُهُ فَإِنْ صَلُحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَاحَ وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسِرْ That the first thing that every man will be judged on on the day of judgment will be his salah. If his salah passes, then all his other actions will pass. Life is easy for him after that. He will, he's, a, he, he's got a good. But if his salah fails, then this person is in great loss. Great loss. The first thing, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge us on the day of judgment is our salah. So how important is this? How important is this when Rasulullah, you know, Rasulullah he's stressing that it's the first thing. Why is it important for us, Abu Ahmad, to know that salah is the first? You know, aren't we going to be asked about everything? Of course we are. So, you know, why, why is the Prophet stressing here that it's the first thing? Because my brothers and sisters, the reality is this. I could have the best charity and I have the best manners and I have the best relationship with my mother and my father. Right? And I'm so caring and I'm so loving and I love to help the people and do all of this ways to nothing if I don't have salah in my life. Because if I stand before Allah and the very first question is about my salah and I am to answer Allah and say, Ya Allah, I had no salah in my life. Allah will not ask me, okay, well look, show me what your relationship with your mother was, right? Or show me how your charity was or show me how your manners were. Maybe we can compensate. No. If salah, if the first pillar isn't there, then Allah is not interested with the rest. Subhanallah. You know, we need to realize that when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need our prayer. We don't, we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need Muhammad's prayer, Abu Ahmad's prayer, Ahmad's prayer. He does not need our worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, it does not increase in his wealth. It does not increase in his dominion subhanahu wa ta'ala. The king. It's on the contrary. We need our prayer. It's for our benefit. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that do you see a man who has a river outside his house? A river. Imagine a river outside your house. And this person bathes in this river five times a day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the sahaba the question, do you think that this man would have any dirt left on him? Any wasakh, any, any, any filth left on him? If he's bathing five times a day. I mean, even if you try in the shower, forget the river, try in the shower five times a day, you're going to be spanking clean for the, for the full day, five times. <laughs> the sahaba said and replied, of course not, oh Rasulullah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is the same with the five prayers. This is an example of the five prayers. It expiates and deletes and gets rid of all the sins for the day. The same way that the river and the shower and the bath cleanse us physically, this salah cleanses our sins. It gets rid of our sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity to connect with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and given us an opportunity to get rid of our sins. Between salah and salah we know between Salah and Salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins. Allahu Akbar. And we all have sins. Kullu ibn Adam al Or every single human being. Is every a one sin. of us knows ourselves, you know. And sometimes, you know, if it's not sins, it's shortcomings. Sometimes if it's not a sin, it's shortcomings. So how beautiful is this between Salah and Salah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives your sins. Between Jum'ah and Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives your sins. So, Wallahi, you know, the Salah. And also the salah is important. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that verily the prayer, the prayer stops you from uh, doing wrong, doing evil, absolutely, doing sins. So praying keeps me away from these things. You know, for many years I struggled with this and I know many of you do and many of us do really is that, okay, you think, well, look, you know, I pray, I pray, but yet I'm still sinning. I'm still doing things that I've been doing for years and I can't stop. This doesn't mean 
that the verse is incorrect in the Quran when I Billah no. What this means is that the quality of our prayer is not sufficient enough. SubhanAllah. Because if prayer was given its rights and it was giving, you know, and it was given the true understanding, how could you sin knowing that a couple of hours ago you were standing before Allah? SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And I mean, many of us, I mean, even if we pray, even if we are constant and consistent on our prayers, we all know someone that's, ne that's negligent of their prayer, that forgets a, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a colleague, someone that we know, someone that we see that, you know, we know that they miss prayers. I mean, it's our duty to remind them about the importance and tell them we should be advocates for khair. Help each other, remind each other. You remind him one day and you find that he'll remind you another day. You remind that sister one day and she reminds you on another day. I mean, that's how the Muslim should be. A Muslim should be an advocate of khair, an advocate of good, and remind each other about the importance of this salah. So it's very important, uh, you know, dear, dear brothers and sisters, that we remind each other about the importance of prayer. And if you see someone slacking off, give them a reminder. Tell them about the importance. Tell them that this will be the first thing that will be judged on the Day of Judgment. And you find that people will come back very quickly. And also, when we talk about Salah, we don't talk about Salah in a negative way. We don't make people feel bad about them not praying. You know, we should be empowering one another. Wisdom. With love and wisdom and, 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 and concern. And concern. You know, if you really truly love someone, then the first thing you would want this person to do is pray. Why? Because you know that if I establish salah in this person's life, I have established deen. I have given this person a key. A key that can open a door between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know... Wallahi, so many of us, we, we, we truly lack, um, what's the word I'm after here? You know, we, we, we truly lack that affection or that connection towards someone who truly, you know, who truly understands us. This is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Allah. And five times a day, five times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you his full attention. Actually, he's, he's honoring us. I mean, it's an honor for us to be able to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five opportunities. Direct connection. I mean, this is, there's, there's, no, um, there's no satellite links that might go down. There's no SIM card that might fail. There's no phone that might not work. This is a direct link between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An open channel. No one listening in. Directly between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, we read the Fatiha. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance every single day in our prayers. 17 times we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Every time we do ruku' Subhana rabbi al-azim. We, we, we know we... Every time we fall into sujood, we say Subhana rabbi al-a'la. We, we, we... I mean, this is a connection. There's, there's, a, there's a connection there. And subhanAllah, I mean, if, if, if there's a husband and a wife and, and these two people don't have a connection, then the marriage is not going to work out. No. How is it between the creator and the creation? If there's no connection. If there's no connection. I mean, how is it? what kind of relationship is this? People would ask. Allahu Akbar. It's, it's really, it's, it's a relationship that's on the tongue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want this sort of relationship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants action. And you know, sometimes we think that salah is only for my akhirah. Salah is only going to benefit me in my akhirah. No. Salah benefits you here. In your grave and in your akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Kad aflaha al mu'minun. Kad aflaha, they were successful. They are successful. Who? We ask the question, who is those that Allah is saying that they're successful? Who? Alladhina fi salatihim. Khashion. Khashion. Those who in their prayer, they have what? Peace. Connection, focus, concentration. These people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here was referring to the companions. That why were they the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them and they were pleased with him. Why? Because they were of the people who when they had their salah, they had it with khushu'ah. They had it with concentration, with full connection towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and I guess this is I mean, a, a, a next level. I mean, once you're constant and consistent on your prayers, then you can start working on your khushu' and your concentration throughout the salah and how, how, what feelings and emotions you get when you are reading the Fatiha 
and when you what feelings and emotions you get when you're in ruku' and what feelings and emotions you get when you're in sujood the closest that a slave can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when he is prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sujood. So, I mean, this is an opportunity for us. If, if we are from the people that are, you know, alhamdulillah, consistent on their prayers, we don't miss our prayers, then we should try and work on the khushu' and try. So we can be from the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described as qad aflah al mu'minun. Successful are those who are believers. And subhanAllah, you find, I mean, the, the, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows favors upon people that are mindful of their salah. I mean, one of the first things is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the daily needs easy for this person. You find that things happen so easily for this person. Why? He's constant on his salah. He has a connection with the big, with the big boss. So again, it goes back to, it helps you here and there. Here and there. Also, this person is saved from the punishment of the grave. Wallahi, Allah. well, that's something. I mean, I mean, sometimes on, on a cold, on a cold, cold day, we put the heater on, we wear a couple of jackets, wear a beanie, put the socks, thermals, this, that, and we're still cold. Can you imagine the coldness of that grave? The earth, the clay, the clay. How cold? Maybe there's a bit of water in there. The insects. I mean, the, the you know, the, the things inside, the, the darkness. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is promising the person that is mindful of his salah, that's consistent with salah, protection from the punishment of the grave. And this person, he's on the day of judgment, on that day when we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most, this person is given his records in his right hand. What a beautiful feeling. What an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows more favors on this person. He allows him to cross the sirat with a lightning speed. So fast. Why? Because he's a connection. He has a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person enters paradise without reckoning. But this person is mindful of his salah. He truly understands how to perform salah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Allahu Akbar. You know, one of the things that I remember one of the mashaykh mentioning that the worst thing, the worst thing, the hardest thing on shaitan. You know, shaitan who we all know has played a big role in our lives and who has destroyed us. And the worst thing that shaitan hates to see, the thing he hates the most is when he sees you pray. Subhanallah. And especially when you prostrate your head and you put it on the floor, this is when shaitan absolutely goes mental. Why? Because it was this act of worship that he refused to do out of pride and arrogance. It was this act that he refused to do that made him be Expelled, yani, yani, subhanallah, he was expelled from the heavens and he was made to be the master of the people of, of, of what? Of hellfire. He will be the leader there. You know? Why? Because of this one act. My brothers, the first thing, you know, you know, wallahi, like, it's all good to speak about virtues, but every now and then we also do need a warning, you know? The first sin was the sin of pride and arrogance. And what was it? That shaitan refused, Iblis refused to prostrate his head to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, sorry, that he refused to prostrate to Adam, right? And how many of us? How many of us? This was Iblis who refused to prostrate to a creation. How many of us are refusing to prostrate to the Creator? Subhanallah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about Iblis. He warns us in the Quran, in, he says in an ayah, he says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ That shaitan wants to cause between you animosity and hatred through using intoxicants and the gambling and he wants to avert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from your prayer. I mean, this is a very clear ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question. So will you not desist? So will you not abstain? Will, will you listen to shaitan? Or will you listen to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So it's, I mean, shaitan gives you this long hope. You've got time. You can, you can start praying properly. When you get older, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to pray five times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive, you know, he forgives sins. So he gives you this, this false hope that you'll be all right. False hope after false hope. And then you realize that the value of salah has dropped in your life. And when, when you look at the priorities in your life, salah is not up there. But it's not only that. Over the time, 
The longer you delay it, my brothers and sisters, the reality is, is that it's the harder it gets to start. The longer, the longer I delay praying and getting closer to Allah, there is a big, a huge, huge danger. And what's the beautiful verse? It's a very, very famous verse in Surah Al-Hadid where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That hasn't the time come, my brothers and sisters. Hasn't the time come, you know. Whenever I hear this verse, I, I, feel, I feel so much... I feel so much emotion in this verse. I feel like Allah, the King of Kings, who doesn't need us. Abu Ahmad, before you were saying, Allah doesn't need our salah. Allah has, Allah has billions and billions of angels. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, The heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. Why? Because they have been overloaded. Overloaded with what? He says, ما في موضع he says that there isn't room, that there isn't room for four fingers in the heavens, except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. Allah so Allah doesn't need our prayer. Right? But this Allah is saying, He is saying, My brothers and sisters, hasn't the time come that our hearts have softened? Hasn't the time come that we should turn back to our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Turn back to his remembrance, turn back to her salah. Huh? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And let them not be like the people who came before them, who believed in Allah. They believed in Allah. But what problem did they have? Abu Ahmad, you just mentioned they had this false, false convict, you know, they had this long hope, procrastination. Until huh? what? Yani what's the dangers in delaying things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they, they delayed it so much that, فَقَصَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts became hard. Subhanallah. Their hearts became hard. When you leave prayer, my brothers and sisters, for so long, you reach an age where even if you want to pray, you feel humiliation. You feel disgrace. So let's not leave it until then. Let's act now. Salah is so, wallahi, wallahi, it's so easy. So easy. The other day, Abu Ahmed, we, we were talking about how much time is wasted on Facebook and my, wallahi, hours. How many of us now, if you were to jump on Facebook, you're definitely going to spend six, seven minutes. Absolutely. Minimum, minimum, six, seven minutes. That is enough time to get up, make wudu, and stand and pray to your Allah. You know what, Muhammad? I mean, we, we, we've spoken about the importance of salah, the importance of, of, of having an understanding of how, how important the salah is in our life and how much reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for the people that pray. However, it's also important to note that there is severe punishment for the one who leaves his salah. Subhanallah, we know from that hadith that the person who does not pray, he's not mindful of his salah, he has five punishments in this world. His life is not blessed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala de deprives him from the light which the, the faces of the righteous people have. This person receives no reward for his good practices. And his dua and, up, and his prayers are not answered. And if he's got no share in the dua of pious people, punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. And at the time of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him more punishment. The person that leaves his salah, he dies disgracefully. This person dies hungry. He dies with a thirst that the oceans of the world will not be able to quench. And subhanAllah in the grave, which is the most severe place, this person is squeezed so that his ribs penetrate. You know, one side penetrates into the, into the other side, subhanAllah. It's a severe punishment. This person, I mean, they say that the, the fire is burnt inside of him and he is rolled onto ashes day and night. And I mean, this could be for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. could be for, for thousands of years. And, and the, most, the most scary punishment is the serpent, which is called Ash-Shuja' al-Aqra, even has a name. This serpent in the grave even has a name. And this thing has, this serpent has fiery eyes. It's got iron nails equal to the length of a day's journey. And, and it's let loose on this person. And it shouts with a thundering noise, My Lord has charged me with thrashing you until sunrise for neglecting Fajr, until Asr for neglecting Dhuhr, until sunset for neglecting Asr, till Isha for neglecting Maghrib, and until dawn for neglecting Isha. 
and the snake, the serpent, will keep thrashing him until the last day. Each blow pushes him to the length of 70 arms. Allahu Akbar, until the day of judgment. Punishment after punishment after punishment. I mean, we need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to avoid the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what a better way than to have a connection with, through our prayers. And the, the very important thing is that we realize that, I mean, how much time do I have left? How much time do I have left? This week could be my last week. Today could be our last Today week. could be my last. What am I waiting for? No, so we need to have this sincere intention. Return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that, Ya Allah, give me assistance. Ya Allah, help me so that I never miss a prayer ever again. That should be, I mean, I, I need to lift, lift the salah and make it a priority in my life. No, and no. tell people around me. And, and remember that, I mean, if, if I die without salah, there is big loss. Subhanallah. And you know, don't don't ever think my brothers and sisters we have come towards the end of the show. So inshallah, you know, we will try to end it on a very positive note in saying that don't ever think in your life that if you really truly wanted to make your salah that Allah's gonna make a had. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Whoever comes to me walking, I come to him running. Whoever comes to me a handspan, I come to him an arm's length. Don't ever think that because you want to pray, Allah is going to make a hard. No way. No way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is longing for the day where you establish your prayer and you reconnect. You reconnect to your creator. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the, the uh, salah the most important things in our life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy. To make it easy for us to establish. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that are steadfast on the salah, inshallah. inshallah and this is a dua that we should be making constantly, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the help, because without His help, we can do nothing. Thank you, dear listeners, brothers and sisters, for tuning into today's show. You've been with the Dean team. Um, we say, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ulaik. Thank you for tuning in once again, and until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel Dean Team Sydney.